present and the future. You're dying. She sent me. She wants to see you. Al Ash. You are in between the dark and the light. Akatosh moved you here so you can cross the void. They need you to wake up. Six days and nights. The battle has begun. We need to hurry. Do not vary from the path. I must go now, but I have something for you. I won't be needing it anymore. Go. They're waiting for you. There you are. I have been looking everywhere for you. Don't worry, I am right here. I will always be here. Oh, my dragon child, follow your heart. Now is not your time. Dragonborn, we need you to wake up now! Dragonborn, please! Wake up, we need you! Dragonborn! By the gods, you're alive! We 
took Fort Ash, then joined up with Ingol at Fort Empire. Quintus is holding Leowin down at Fort Nick. Kameus is holding Coral from Leowin at Fort Ash. Skinbrad pledged the help, but I can't tell you if he did. I... I thought I was going to lose you. We need to push on and take the farmhouse. Then we can attack their catapults. Taking the farmhouse will weaken and threaten their middle ground. From there, we can attack the heights near the well, dividing Leowin's forces. Brabil is abstaining. Chaining Hall is rabbling. Okay. What's up? We need to push on and take the heights near the well, dividing Leowin's forces. Okay. Okay! Let's take those heights! Onward! To victory! Yeah, yeah! Come on! I dare you! 
Okay, on me. Need something? To way to victory. Need something? Be careful. something it's it's all like a dream i i need to figure out what to do next dragonborn what are we gonna do now cyrodiil deserves better than that with maragon maybe sethius will sue for peace he wasn't all that bad an emperor If only we could just go home, stop the fighting, live a normal life again. <sighs> it's over. We have won the war. Fort Nickel has fallen. Leowin 
has surrendered. Skingrad's arrival has forced Charl back behind his walls. Emberville. Ravel abstained. He turned his army around and returned Be to the careful with our fight. Thank you, Quintus. For everything. For you too, Camaeus. Countess, the Legion stands ready. It doesn't feel right marching into the city. The citizens have put up with enough bloodshed these past years. Make it quick. Let's make it happen. Try to clear some of this mess out of life. Yeah. What to do next. I understand. Count Camaeus, you have proven yourself a trustworthy ally. I shan't forget. And I accept your apology on behalf of the Dominion for my father's death. Countess? No, please. Don't. Need Won't something? you stay until I have decided what to do next? Of course. Ingol, there are no words to say how grateful I am for your help in Bruma's hour of need. Please, feel free to take your men and return home. Sorella and Angie should be waiting for your safe return. It's been an honor to fight alongside you. If you ever need me for anything, you know where to find me. Goodbye, Guardian. Rigmore? Okay, ready to make camp. I want everyone rested and ready. Take care of the wounded. Let's start clearing this place up. Looters are to be executed on sight. A low rider approaches. Need something? Yes. I bring a message for Speak the Lady quickly. Rigmore, Countess of Bruma. Need something? Speak Dragon quickly. Hmm? Yes. I'm prepared to make a peace deal. I never wanted any of this. Screw the prophecy, old wives' tales, and hocus pocus. I'm in no mood for it. I would like that. Greetings and salutations, my friends. Hey, girl. What's up? No need, my friend. I feel invigorated again. It's been some time since I had a purpose to do anything at all. Lady Rigmore needs my service, just as her father offered his, to help us fight the Dominion to a standstill during the Resistance. I feel obliged to return the favor. Did you know my father, Eamon? 
Not personally. He arrived later in our struggle after the Empire betrayed us. The war had been raging for some time. If only Meade had kept his nerve after Narafin was defeated at the Battle of the Red Ring, maybe we would not have had to fight another five years alone. I don't think the Dominion accounted for the fact we would never surrender. After we crossed the desert, we regrouped in Skaven. At this time, only Hagath held out from Arinelia's forces. She followed us over the desert, and by the time she made camp outside the walls, Desianus had arrived with his legion, and volunteers from High Rock, Skyrim, were all over. That was a bloody day. Although we lost the city, it was the beginning of the end for Arinelia. By the time Mead had won in Cyrodiil, we had retaken Skaven and pushed her all the way back across the desert. Then the White Gold conquered that happened, and the Empire abandoned us to the Dominion. They thought they could get away with murder and began to ethnically cleanse the South, consolidating their gift from Mead. That's when your father arrived, Rigmore. I have never seen such ferocity. Just the sheer size of the Nords, all berserkers. We also had a lot of former legionnaires too, Bretons. Awesome. And we fought on. Then one day, they were gone. It was over. The war had given me a purpose, and now I had none. I was just a lordless knight with nowhere to call home. The rest is, how shall we say, history. What will you do when this is all over? I have decided to return home to Rehad. Hammerfell is calling. Who knows what awaits? So what's your story, Tish? My story? Man. You ever heard of Rothgar? Well, it's a small part of High Rock in the mountains there. We lived in a small village under the shadow of Mount Sorrow. Our tribe was the Gorlana. But it got swallowed up along with most other small tribes into the bigger ones during the squabbles. That's my name, Gorlana Tish. The chief was looking for young wives and had his beady eye on me, so I up and left overnight. My mother was sleeping, but my father caught me at the door of our hut, all set, ready to go with my pack. He knew. He never said a word. He just grabbed my face in one hand, lifting me onto my toes. And with his thumb, drew a line from my nose down over my lips. He let me down, then placed his hand on my shoulder with a slight nod. Man, I can tell you that was intense. You see, we don't do that kind of lovey shit most men and mare do. No way. But it meant everything to me. Sometimes I wish I could cry like you milk drinkers. <laughs> I was quite young then. Had been down the mines for most of my childhood. I'll never forget. Every morning when I woke up, the very first thing I would do was just gaze up at that mountain and watch the clouds kind of get wrapped around it. Yeah, Mount Sorrow. I'll have to go back there someday. What about B? You know, Bersalak. How did you meet him? Was it on the battlefield? <laughs> no, nothing like that. It wasn't long after I left the Blades. You were in the Blades? Yeah. But I don't talk about it, okay? Okay. What?
I was crossing over the border from here, from Cyrodiil into Skyrim. It was quite high up in the Jarl Mountains, and man, it was so cold. A storm was whipping up the slope, and I knew I had to get to shelter before nightfall. Find a cave, or an overhang, or I would freeze to death. So I kept going. All of a sudden, I saw a clearing, away over the gorge. I knew there had been a recent avalanche, but I had no choice. I followed the fresh snow, and after a while, my way was blocked by a crevasse. It wasn't too wide, but I figured too wide for a jump, so I followed it looking for a narrow gap. I could see one up ahead. Man, it looked like I was getting lucky. But as I got closer, I could make out what looked like... I don't know, some kind of debris. But there was this guy. No kidding you, Rigmore. Upside down wedged in this hole. This crevasse. With his legs sticking out into the air. I mean, he looked frozen to death. A block of ice. <laughs> there. Hanging upside down in this crevasse. Thank my lucky stars, a way over. So I took a running jump, landed on his fat ass, and propelled myself out of the hole. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> but by dying, this poor guy had saved my life. I couldn't leave him like that. I mean, normally I wouldn't have hung around, as I wasn't quite out of the danger zone yet. It was getting dark in the wind. It was like howling. So I lassoed this guy's legs and pulled his body out of the hole. It was the least I could do, right? I mean, he was gone. Frozen stiff. Even parts of his beard snapped off in my fingers. And even under all that ice, you could tell the blood had rushed to his head. Which looked like a giant fucking frozen plum. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have time to stay around, or I'd be joining him. So anyway, sometime later, as I was coming down the mountain, I ran into about eight or nine bandit marauders looking for a quick septum. But they weren't going to take me without a fight. That's what we Orsimer do. We fight. So I took a couple out. But these guys were getting the better of me, tough bastards. I was going down, and I was shouting, Come on, you motherfuckers, give it your best shot! I took a blade in the guts. Uh-oh, I thought. I'm done here. Then I hear this roar. It was like, over my shoulder. And I was like... Hey, this has got to be a bear or something, right? I was blacking out. My sword slipped from my fingers and I was going down. And for the first time, in a long time, I felt warm. It was weird. I was face down in the dirty snow. I mean, I could taste it. While all this shit was going on like a blur all around me. I just wanted to sleep. I said my last words with an oath to Malakath. Take me, Malakath. Let it be known I fought and died with honor. And look favorably on my clan as worthy of your gratitude. I woke up. Only the gods know how long I'd been under, but... There, on a rock, sat this big fucking guy. No shit, Rigmore. The same guy I had pulled out of that hole with the frozen plum head. No way. <laughs> saved my life. Like I saved his, I guess. <laughs> I haven't been able to shake his fat ass since. He's like, fucked up in there somewhere. Maybe it was all that time hanging upside down with his ass sticking in the air. I don't know. <laughs> Oh my days. <laughs> I mean, I should have died back there. And I was in a really bad way. You know, he took care of me. Stitched my wounds, washed and dressed me, fed me, and even took me for a shit when I needed one. And has never, to this day, uttered one single word. That is quite something, Tish. <clears throat> so yeah, I've been looking out for him ever since. Do you have any regrets? Hey, I better be getting back. B's not too good if I'm not there when he wakes up. And we don't want that, right? Thanks, Tish. No sweat, Rigmore. See you around.
Yeah. I could sleep for a hundred years. Dragonborn, wake up. It's time to go. As I'll ever be. Hey, Eamon. Where's Tish? Tish has decided to go home. Back to High Rock. You might be able to catch her if you hurry. Tish! Wait! Hey, girl. What's up? Where are you going? Bruma has been good to us. We don't want to outstay our welcome. Tish, please. <sighs> Won't you stay? Ah, Rigmore. Don't do this to me. Tish, please. Don't go. You'll always be welcome here. Where will you go? Uh, look, me and B gonna head up to High Rock, see what's happening up there. I got some unfinished business, and talking to you kind of cleared my head a bit. I understand. No regrets, huh? One of my biggest regrets in my life was killing all those dragons. Watch out for a trap. Cethius will be surrounded by his Praetorian guard. I'll be fine, Quintus. Anyway, I have the Dragonborn. What could possibly go wrong? If anything untoward happens, I will march my legion into the city in the name of Titus Mead II and give control back to the Council of Elders. I am sure Blackwell is as good as his word. Thank you, Quintus, for everything. Don't make it sound like it's the end. This is just the beginning. Good luck, my lady. Come on, Dragonborn. Let's get this over with.
Dragonborn, wait. What shall I say to them? Well, I certainly won't be marrying that asshole Robert, so check that off the list. The best he can hope for is his freedom. Same with the father. We hold the upper hand of the negotiations, right? And marrying the Emperor? I don't think so. All this political bullshit, how do they even live with themselves? They will do anything. Stoop to the lowest of the low, at every opportunity for power. That's what really pisses me off. The power doesn't belong to them. It belongs to the citizens, the people of Tamriel. If only I could be a true voice for the people. Do you think that I have what it takes, Dragonborn, to become Empress? But what about you? What will you do, no matter what happens next? I love you, Dragonborn. I belong to you and you alone. I'll never stop loving you. Do you believe in the prophecy thing? What will become of us? What are you doing? Why are you standing there? Kill them! Blackwell, order your men to kill these traitors! Hold your swords. I am your emperor! I demand you kill them. You... You... You must obey me. You will cut them down this instant. You... Pick up your sword and... And cut them down. Cut them down, I say. Then... Then... I... I am undone. It wasn't me. I, I am innocent. It was her, Morag. She murdered the children, not me. You... you can keep the crown. Here, here, take it. Take it. Please. Quarter. Quarter. Mercy. is dead. Long live the Emperor. Yeah! Majesty.
majesty, whomsoever takes off the head that wears the crown reigns supreme. You are Lord Protector of Cyrodiil and the Empire. Take your rightful place upon the throne of Dragonborn King. My lady, after you. Your Majesty, as Lord Chancellor, it is my duty to protect and serve, and pursue your interests with absolute unwavering ruthlessness. If you would kindly permit me to, and I am sure you'll agree, tie up a few loose ends. We have to nip it in the bud, so to speak, all of them. My lady, you look quite peakish. Are you unwell? I... I am with child. Dragonborn, of course I'm sure. What, the baby? Or you becoming emperor? What are you going to do? Well, I don't want to have the baby here. I want to go home. Uh-uh. You're the last Dragonborn, the rightful heir to the throne. Blackwell said it himself. I need you now more than ever. Please, don't leave me here alone. Please take me home, Dragonborn. Let's have Blackwell look after things here. If he needs us, he can send for us. Here he is. Ask him. Ask him about what happens next. Well? There will be a small interim phase, so correspondence can be sent to those that need to be informed, such as dignitaries and the royal houses of Tamriel. They shall be invited to the coronation, which in this case I suggest be arranged at the same time, as Rigmore is now the High Queen of Cyrodiil. But first, we need to protect the integrity of our queen and the child.
So, first I suggest Rigmore takes up the name of the House of Mead. Rigmore Mead? <laughs> yeah, right. It might only be a temporary change, but also a necessary one. Majesty, depending on how we go forward from here, I have another suggestion. I suggest you arrange a marriage at the soonest opportunity. You, as the last Dragonborn, are the rightful heir to the throne. As soon as I heard of your accomplishments, I knew it was fact. That not only were you gifted the Thum, but also with the ability to absorb the souls of dragons. That you were anointed by Akatosh himself as the rightful heir, before even taking the crown. If you find that arrangement to be impossible for whatever reason, there are alternative ways to proceed. A partnership or friendship ceremony for the child's sake. It would not be binding and you could both live separate lives. Where there is an understanding between you and shared responsibilities. Especially if you decide to cede. Or you could cede the crown. Rigmore becomes empress and you go back to what you were doing before. Understood. My lady. The Dragonborn and I shall return to Bruma for the time being and leave you in charge as caretaker. Maybe... Maybe Titus Mead II will return someday. We will, of course, comply with anything you ask of us. Of course, my lady. As the former Countess of Bruma, administration will pass to Sigun. Bruma will, by default, become a royal city and imperial place of residence. There is a small matter that needs to be attended to, but that can wait for the time being. I'm sure both of you need time to adjust to the new situation you find yourselves in. The traitors Leowin, Chaden Hall, and Coral have all been dealt with, permanently, and the houses of Coral and Chaden Hall, for the time being, have passed on to their next of kin. Leowin? Leowin is in need of a new count. I suggest... Cassius Varon. It is imperative we have someone we can trust, implicitly. His naval expertise would suit the county and protect the Nibbin Bay, especially as the disbanded bandit army has gone to ground in the border regions of Black Marsh, elsewhere in Valenwood. Of course, Quintus was another option to consider, but with growing tensions in Hammerfell, it would be prudent to have him remain there for the time being. I shall get on to it at once. I shall arrange the necessary correspondence announcing the change of dynasty and forthcoming coronation to be sent to whom it may concern. So expect immediate interest and requests for parley, especially from the Elder Council in exile and the Aldmeri Dominion, who I suspect will want to discuss the restoration of the White Gold Concordant. Yeah, right. Lady Rigmore, take this opportunity to relax as best you can. Of course, return home to Bruma. But soon, whether you like it or not, you will need to adapt and come to terms with your new situation. Once the news has reached to the far corners of Tamp, Nern, and you address the foreign dignitaries and your subjects, you must respect their expectations and act accordingly, befitting a queen. Hey, I'm not the Emperor, and I put up with this kind of stuff from Malsam long enough, so drop it, Blackwell. But you are still the Queen. Rightfully so, as the Dragonborn is the rightful heir to the Imperial Throne by right of combat. I realize this situation is not perfect, or even expected. I am sure it comes as a surprise to all of us, but here we are. It's not the first time in the history of monarchies that things have turned out... exceptional... But we must all agree that the recent events that have brought us here are indeed exceptional. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm just worried, I guess. I, I don't know. Rigmore, I have been on the receiving end of your... <clears throat> diplomatic parlay. You have proven, beyond doubt, your ability to lead, to strategize, to stand up, shoulders back head held high in the face of overwhelming odds. 
and with the dragonborn by your side? If it's peace you want, if it's a home to go where you can raise a child in safety, you have a place alongside the dragonborn to make this real, to make it a success because no one is going to make that success for you. So please, do take the time to return to Bruma, appoint a lady-in-waiting, and send her here to the palace as to arrange the royal suite. I take it you have dealt with Sir Robert? Then I leave his fate up to you. If you will permit me, I have matters to attend to. I shall send word if something important comes up and your presence is required. My lord. My lady. Dragonborn. How do you feel about all this? You? Unsure? I understand. I really do. We share a destiny. I know that. We have both suffered from amnesia. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't been there for me. Been there for all of us. I know I'm not perfect. But you've always been there to carry me when I fall, to put me back together when I'm broken. I would do the same for you in a heartbeat. I'll always have your back. And I want you to know you are kind and stronger than you know. You're my dragonborn. And I'll protect you always. I love you too. Can you take me home now? You know what I mean. <sighs> okay. Need something? Need something? Yes? Yes? Hmm? 